talking doc today we will talk about the article 1184 <clears throat> So, Sivonga Community College vision. We advocate for the reformation of the community and the country. The mission is to promote quality education via diversified field of specialization, to promote holistic education through arts, literature, science, and philosophy, to produce well-organized individuals as catalysts of development. Article 1184, the condition that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or if it has become indubitable that the event will not take place. So Article 1184 is also... The muted Kadai. I got reporter na muted. Okay na, Doc? Ah, uh, yes. So, pas ay, Article 1184 also refers to a positive or suspensive condition. The happening of an event at a determinate time the obligation is extinguished first as soon as the time expires without the event taking place second as soon as it has become indubitable that the event will not take place although the time specified has not yet expired so takatong gingon ni doc nga pag last meeting na suspensive condition is kung wala pa nahitabo ang usa ka condition so ang so ang obligation is wala pa sad na delivered for example, X obliges himself to give ten thousand to give B ten thousand pesos if B will marry C before B reaches the age of twenty three. So if X so in this case, X is liable if B marries C before he reaches the age of twenty three. So C si X is liable ni B if pakatla ni B before siya of twenty three. Next is not liable if B marries C at the age of 23 or after he reaches the age of 23. In this case, the time is specified before reaching the age of 23 has expired without the condition and mar marrying C being fulfilled. The obligation is extinguished as soon as B becomes 23 years old. So, dili na liable si X ni B kay ang gisabutan nila is before mutong tong si B og 23. So in this case, I mean, si C ay di pakasla ni B, si C at the age na of 23 or after na sa iyahang 23. So ang, ang obligation is expired without the condition marrying C being fulfilled. Next, if B dies at the age of 22 without having married to C, the obligation is extinguished because it has become indubitable that the condition will not take place. So in this case, the obligation of X is deemed extinguished from, from the death of B, although the time is specified before reaching the age of 23 has not yet expired. So in the, in the, the pita, dilit na, I mean, if B dies at the age of 23 without having married to C, the, the obligation is extinguished. So, Diring the pita is dilit na mubayad si X ni, ni B kay of course indubitable naman siya which means nga dilit na jud siya mahitabo kay patay naman si B. So that's all about the article 1184. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> before we'll proceed to article 1185, anybody who can tell me what have you understand uh what do you understand about the word extinguished because i th i think i already have mentioned that last time so what do you understand from the word extinguished so the condition that that some event happen at a determinate time shall extinguish the obligation as soon as the time expires or if it has become in 
uh, in the visible mm -hmm. that the event will not take place. So, kinsa may nakasabot anang <clears throat> extinguish. Kinsa may nakahinomdom sa kong sulti. Meaning quit? Uh, Heidi? I think this ay kan doc kanang ex ex extinguish kay kanang maquits na gani ang obligation doc. Okay, maquits na mahunong na no. Mahunong na ang obligation. Okay. So sa example sa reporter this morning, thank you very much reporter. Sa example niya dire, uh, X is liable if B marries ano, X obliges himself to give B what 10,000 pesos if B will marry C before B reaches the age of 23. No? So, pagka 23 ni B, extinguish na dayon or mahunong na stop na obligation. Or kung mamatay ang, kung mamatay si B before reaches the age of 23. So, the obligation will be extinguished. Okay. So, I'll give the audience to have the privilege to ask questions to the reporter or the reporter will ask question to the uh, audience so next re next reporters no katong akong ihatag pa ang katong ako pang hatagan og topic dili ning karon so you'll prepare um quiz to your classmates no bisa mga 5 to 10 items lang Tapos, I'll be teaching you how to do online quizzer. Sige, so wala question, reporter to the audience. If Check if nagnaminaw sila sa inyong report. Wala ala, Doc. Sige, how about 1183 reporter na Ana? Wala gapo ng 1183. Wala paghihapon, Doc. Sige, continue na lang sa 1185. Okay, Doc. Okay, Doc. Kita ra dok. Yes. Okay dok. Start ako dok. Good morning everyone. Um, I'm going to talk all about Article 1185. Um, Article 1185 is the condition that some event will not happen at a determinate time shall render the obligation effective from the moment the time indicated has elapsed or if it has become evident that the event cannot occur. If no time has been fixed, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled at such time as may have probably been contemplated bearing in mind the nature of the obligation. So under this article 1185, sa mga condition di ay sa mga events na wala na hitabo sa gihatag nga oras or deadline, mahimura nig effective ang obligation if ang gihatag ng oras or deadline is nile by is nile by na or the day after o effective po ang obligation if na ay reasons nga nung dili siya may tabo even though ang deadline wala pa nila by or na expired o sa mga o sa mga condition sa mga events nga walay time na na fix ang condition kay na hitabo na ni nga events then effective ang obligation or intention both parties nga na hitabo na to siya so, if Article 1184 is the positive condition, Article 1185 is the opposite, which is the negative condition. Negative condition is an event that will not happen at a determinate time, and the obligation shall become effective and binding by these two things. First, from the moment the time indicated has elapsed without the event taking place. And the second thing is, from the moment it has become evident that the event cannot occur, although the time indicated does not yet elapse. 
So for example, in this situation, X binds himself to give Y 10,000 if Y is not yet married to W on, this, on December 30. So there are three chances that the obligation is effective or not. So in letter A, X is not liable to Y if Y marries W on December 30 or prior thereto. So in this situation, dili liable or dili obliged na muhatag si X ni Y of 10,000 if nagpakasal na si Y ni W on December 30. Kaya ang condition man ni X nga dili pakasalan si Y ni W so sa time indicated which is December 30. So ang obligation is not effective. Um, in letter B, X is liable to Y if on December 30, Y is not married to W or if Y marries W after December 30. In the latter case, the condition which is not marrying, not marrying W is fulfilled upon the expiration of the time indicated which is December 30. Um, in this situation, si X is obliged na siya muhatag if sa time nga gihatag, which is December 30, wala pa jud si Y nagpakasal ni W. Hangtod ni Labay na ang time indicated, which is December 30, which means the obligation is effective. Letter C. Suppose W dies on November 20 without having been married to Y. The obligation is rendered effective because it is certain that the condition not to marry W will be fulfilled. In this case, the obligation becomes effective from the moment of W's death on November 20, although the time indicated, which is December 30, has not yet elapsed. So, in this case, naan ay reason nga nung bili mag, makapakasal si Y ni W, kay si W namatay man pag November 20. So, ang obligation is effective from the day na namatay si W which means makahatag jud si X og 10,000 ni Y even though wala pa na expired or wala pa na elapse on the time indicated which is December 30. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Glaze. <clears throat> so that is very clear, no? So th this article 1185 is just the opposite of the article 1184. So, ang 1184, uh, as soon as the time expires without the event taking place, may extinguish na yung obligation. As soon as the it has become indebitable, that the event will not take place, although the time specified has not expired. So, the obligation will be extinguished. Ang sa Article 1185 po, um, from the moment that time indicated has elapsed without the event taking place, what jud siya nahitabo during the time nagihatag as deadline on a certain condition, then uh, <clears throat> the obligation also will not take place. Okay? So, any question for Article 1185? Wala radok. Wala radok. Nasabtan radok. Okay, ako ako'y pangutan na. So what if, um, okay, this is for the reporter. The question is for the reporter. Yes, though. What if uh, the time, no, indicated has elapsed and the event is not taking place? Is the obligers obliger still obliged to deliver the obligation? Yes, doc. Um, ob obliged siya, doc. Uh, is it a doc? If daily yes. ma... If the if... time, because imohang condition di rimangod sa Article 1185, from yes, the moment doc. the time indicated has elapsed without the event of taking place. Yes, doc. So what if the event really did not take place? Is the obliger still obliged to deliver his or her obligation? Yes, dog. Obliged gya pun siya, dog. Kanang labi na, dog, na siya, reason na 
namatay ba siya or unsa do for reason nga dili jud mahitabo tong event nga iyang gihatag do. Okay, very good. Yes, doc. Still, no, even if the time ang dire sa Article 184 man good. Even though kung wala jud na hitabo, um it extinguished the obligation, correct? Kung wala yes, mahitabo yes, ang kuan, so it, it extinguished the obligation. But dire sa Article 1185, bisag wala na nahitabo or ang event this that did not take place, still the obligor is obliged to deliver his or her obligation. Yes, Doc. Okay. Sige, thank you so much, uh, Miss Blaze. So let's, can we proceed to Article 1186? Yes, Doc. Kajasa, Doc. Sure. Usara po ka ni Dong or duha mo? Usara do. Okay. Hello. Asa din mo? Sa do ba shared? sa ubos dong ang green sa green tanin ako nang tapad ng participants chat share screen hindi ha tapad dira sa ubos oh. ay sito ka buyon ang mga mute start video ano diha dong Isa mo. Sa gawin wala gito. Asa ni mo? Sentuh mana gitu. Kadali sedok ka. Sedok bilang ini tak asal. Ia dong. Okey dan toga nih ha. I open dah alim file. Kena dok, nara dok. Tak apa. Nak kita ani mau share screen? Oh, nak kita nara dok. Nga i-click tong share screen tapos punta ka sa imong file. Unsupported lagi. Oh, 
Ang supported lagi do. Supported ka dong? Ang supported ako do. Ganiha okay lagi to ni ho. Ay send daw ko ni mong file sa imong class video ka kung i play. Sige dok. na forward na lang ako doc na sa class B dolls nga JC. Um, class B dolls, for the next three porters, kay pag-practice mo daan diri sa Zoom, ha? Kay pwede naman mo makaabli aning Zoom. Automatic para. Dili na tamadugay ba kung saan nila. Okay, dili ba ko ka... Dili ko ka-exit ani ako ang screen kay ako may host. Good, tesa, ha? Kadiyot. Sige, go ahead. So, what is, good morning everyone, especially to your doc. So, what is call 1186 all about? Article 1186 all about the condition shall be deemed fulfilled with the obliger voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So, constructive fulfillment of suspensive condition. There are three reasons for the application of this article. Number one, the condition is suspensive. Number two, the obliger actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. Number three, he acts voluntarily. The law does not require that the obliger acts with the malice or fraud as long as his purpose is to prevent the fulfillment of the condition. He should not be allowed to profit from his own fault or bad faith to the prejudice of the obligee. In a reciprocal obligation, like a contract of sale, both parties are mutually obligers and also obligee. <coughs> Next look. S 
suspensive, the happening of the condition gives rise to an obligation. A suspensive condition is a condition which suspends rights and obligations or the validity of the entire contract until a certain future event occurs. Upon the occurrence of the event, the, the suspended part of the contract or indeed the entire contract is brought to life. Example, me binds herself to deliver a determinate car to Lester. If he marries Wina, the obligation is only demandable upon the happening of the condition that is. If Lester marries Wina, the obligation is suspended and not yet demandable. Number two, the obliger actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. When obliger committed an act voluntarily, but not to prevent the fulfillment of the condition, there is no constructive fulfillment. If in preventing the fulfillment of the condition, the obliger acts in the exercise of rights, the condition will not be fulfilled. So example, S promised to sell his land to Y. If Y would be able to secure a loan from a certain bank, later on, S changed his mind about selling his land. He induced the bank not to give Y a loan. Under the above article, the condition is deemed complied with and S is liable to sell his land. S should not be allowed to profit by his own fault or bad faith. Next, though. He, number three, he acts voluntarily. Example, Kim agreed to give J a 5% commission. If the latter could sell the former's land at a certain price, G found a buyer who definitely decided to buy the property upon the terms prescribed by Kim. To evade the payment of the commission agreed upon, Kim himself sold to the buyer the property at a lower price without the aid of J. In this case, it can be said that the due performance by J of his undertaking, the condition for the payment of the commission was purposely prevented by Kim and it's deemed fulfilled. Next though. Another example, E agreed to give B 5% of the commission. If B could sell A's property at a certain price, B found a buyer that agrees upon A's terms. To evade the payment of the commission agreed upon, he sold his property to the buyer at a lower price without B's aid. In this, the obliger acts voluntarily but not for cause of prevention of fulfillment of the obligation. It is no longer considered part of this article. Last. So Article 1186 applies also to an obligation subject to a resolutory condition. With respect to the debtor who is bound to return what he has received upon the fulfillment of the condition. So, what is resolutory? Resolutory or the happening of the condition extinguishes the obligation already existing. So, another meaning of resolutory condition refers to a condition whereby upon fulfillment terminates an already enforceable obligation. It also entitles the parties to be resorted to their original position. A resolutory condition is also implied in all commutative contracts. Example, Vince binds his, himself to lend his only car to Lester until the latter passes the CPA board. The obligation to lend is immediately demandable. Lester's right over the car is extinguished upon his passing the CPA board. Lester is now obliged to return the car. Next, though. Another example, X obliges himself to allow Y to occupy the former's house in Manila as long as X is assigned by their company in the province. When Y learned that X would be transferred to Manila, he was able to induce the president of the company to assign another person in place of X. The obligation of X is extinguished because the fulfillment of the resultory condition was voluntarily prevented by Y. Hence, why must be gate the house? Thank you. Para todo.
Okay, thank you so much for your report on Article 1186, okay. So Article 1186, the condition shall be deemed fulfilled with the obligor voluntarily prevents its fulfillment. So meaning to say ang obligor siya mismo no ni prevent para ma-fulfill no ang pag-deliver sa obligation. So dapat na requisites no there are three requisites of for the application of this article. One, the condition is suspensive. So na discuss na to ning suspensive obligation mao na to ni siya na if the condition is not happening, no? So it is suspensive. The, the obligor actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. It must be that the obligor is the one preventing the fulfillment of the condition, not the obligee. And of course, he acts voluntarily. So say, siya gud mismo, no? Walay dagpugos niya. So, kading three requisites muna siya necessary to apply Article 1186. The law does not require the obligor act, the obligor acts with the malice of fraud as long as his purpose is to prevent the fulfillment of the condition. He should not be allowed to profit from his own fault or bad faith to the prejudice of the obligee. So, in reciprocal obligation, obligation like a contract for sale, both parties are mutually obligers and also obligee. So A or one suspensive, the happening of the condition give rise to an obligation. So me binds herself to deliver a determinate car to Lester if he marries Wena or Wina. The obligation is only demandable upon the happening of the condition that is if Lester marries Wena. No? So na ay, na ay car, determinate car nga ihatag si me to Wena kung magminyo sila so suspensive na siya kaya kung di sila magminyo it means to say di siya kahatag sa car so the obligation is suspended and not yet demandable two the obligor actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition so S promised to sell his land to Y if Y would be able to secure a loan from a bank so later on S changed his mind about selling his land di na lang niya ibaligya no he induced the bank not to give Y a loan. So under the above article, the condition is deemed compliant with, with and S is liable to sell his land. S should not be allowed to profit. Naputol na dok. Profit by his own fault or bad faith. Profit by his own fault or bad faith. Sorry kay dok. Um, okay. Um, under the above article, the condition is deemed complied with and S is liable to sell his land. S should not be allowed to profit by his own fault or bad faith. Yes, no. So, napanisumpay. Suppose the in inducement made by S was prompted by some other reason. Is there constructive fulfillment? The answer is yes. The law does not require that S act with malice or fraud as long as his purpose to prevent the fulfillment of the condition does not apply if the act of the obliger is in the exercise of the right. So it's siya may tag-iya sa yuta. Si S may tag-iya sa yuta, correct? So na-change iyang mind nga di lang niya ibaligya. <clears throat> yeah. Kaning pag-ingon ni Y or ni S nga Bank, ayo lang paluna si Y. Maong, dili, maong giina niya nga dili palunon si Y kaya para ma dili ma-fulfill ang obligation nga mabaligya niya ang yuta kay ni promise man si S nga ibaligya ang yuta if and only if makaloon si Y sa bangko. So, there there is no malice nor fraud in this case. So, like fraud ani din na pita kay siya may tag-iya po sa yuta yun, no So, dili man ingon nga si Y mo'y tag-iya sa yuta. So, kung si S 
na ay gibuhat nga something to prevent the fulfillment of the condition, it means to say nga si S ni profit sa kang Y nga property. But in this case, iyahaman ning iyahaman ning yuta. So, walay fraud ani, walay malis. No dili siya maka maka profit sa iyang kaugalingong property kay naman dire condition nga uh, the obliger actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition man. And dapat walay profit no dili siya ka profit he should not be allowed to profit from his own fault or bad faith so wala man ni sayop si ko andire es kay dilan nga ibaligya ang iyang ilatawag og yuta niya wala man niya paluna lang si Y sa bank kay para dili niya mabaligya kay mo man ay condition nila no nga ibaligya lang niya ko panalitan maka si bank okay so In this case, Article 186 does not apply the act of the obliger if the exercise in in the exercise of a right. So, ang kaning next example, Kim agreed to give Jay five percent commission if the latter could sell the former land at a certain price. Jay found a buyer who definitely decided to buy the property upon the terms prescribed by Kim. To evade the payment of the commission agreed upon, Kim himself sold to the buyer the property at a lower price without the aid of Jay. In this case, it can be said that due performance by Jay of his undertaking, the condition of the payment of the commission was purposely prevented by Kim and is deemed fulfilled. Mm. So si Kim mismo nagtraba nagbuhat ato dili to true J no so si Kim mismo nga gibaligya niya ang yuta so he acts voluntarily gibaligya niya ang yuta ano no no yes to another buyer okay so i think do you have any question about this article any question Lara doc so dapat The condition must be suspensive. The obliger actually prevents the fulfillment of the condition. Si mismo si obliger ang gahimo. And he acts voluntarily. So can we proceed to Article 1187? Duha nga rin niyang reporter, Annie. Yes, Doc. Okay. Wait, sir. Naan ang Article 1183? Na siya klase do kay irregular man day ang mag-report. Ah, ipasend lang yung report day kay kita na lang mo play. Yes, doc, na send na doc. Okay. Naviora, Doc. Here. Naviora, guys. Here. Oh. So, good morning, everyone. Um, Article 117. The effect of condition obligation to give once the condition has been fulfilled shall re retroact to the day of constitution, constitution of, of, of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes reciprocal presentation upon the parties, the fruit and interest during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have been mutual pensated. If the obligation is unilateral, the, obli the debtor shall appropriate the fruits and interest received unless the Uh, unless from the nature and circumstances of the obligation, it should be inferred that the intention of the person constituting the same was different. In obligation to do, not to do, the court shall determine in case the retroactive effect of the condition has been complied. So, retroactive, retroactive effect of fulfillment of condition, suspensive condition. An obligation to give subject to suspensive condition become demandable only upon the fulfillment of condition. However, once the condition is fulfilled, its effect shall 
retroact to the day of obligation was constituted. So, so dito is presupposed na, na fulfill na a suspensive condition and we are talking about the effects. Ang effect daw is retroactive. So what is retroactive means? Retroactive means is nagbabalik tanaw ka, no? No, um, retroactive is nagre-remence ka. Or kumbaga, inaalala mo from the past yung mga bagay-bagay. So here, we are discussing the effect of obligation. So here, an example. On January 20, the seller agree to sell his parcel of land to the buyer from 100,000. 100, Should the buyer lose this, the case involving the recovery of another parcel of land? On April 10, on April 10, the seller sell the land to Mr. Adi, the creditor, and the buyer subsequently lost the in his case in December 4. So, in this example, there is have an original contract parties which is the obligor and the obligee. Si seller and si buyer na sila agreement on January 20 na si seller iyang ibalig ya kang buyer ang parcel of land if the buyer lose their case in involving the another parcel. So, wait sa. So, on, April, on January 20, in that day, mao na ilahang original contract or nag, nagkasinabot na sila. So, then, on April 10, Gibaligya ni seller yung parcel of land to another person, which is to Mr. Adi, the creditor. So, subsequently, on December 4, that day, nahitabo na sus suspensive condition, which is napildi si buyer sa yang case. So, before na ma before ma fulfill ang suspensive condition, which is yung napildi si sa case si buyer. Walang demandable si buyer. So, the buyer has no right to demand the, seal, the seller yung land because, understandly, wala pa nahitabo ang suspensive condition which is mapildi sa case si buyer. But when the condition fulfill na, on the sim, uh, I mean, when the condition fulfilled on December 4. It is as if the buyer was entitled to the land on the beginning of that day of that contract, which is on April 10, sa madaling sabi kung kanus asila nag istorya, that time when the contract perfected dun na di na entitled si buyer. So... So retroactive retroactive effect as to as to fruits and interest in obligation to give will be discussed on Miss Kindala. Yes, Dai. So next one. So retroactive effect as to fruits and interest in obligation to give. In reciprocal, uh, in reciprocal obligation, the fruits and interest received during the pendency of the condition are deemed to have been not well compensated. So there is no retroact effect according to article. Both of them are obligated to give to each other. Put pa sa both, pareharan ni sila demandable sa fruits and interest during the pendency of the obligation condition. So example, when buyer... When B lost the case in court December 4, so an obligation is seller must deliver the land. Then say buyer must pay worth of 150,000. So, ang problema ni is ngayon, what is uh, panglitan ko ang land 
may uh, kananay sa baanglan ay mga dah, uh, puno nga gitamnan og mga sabol mais or mga unsa pa na mangga or whatever ang uh, apang uta na kinsa ang may ari or kinsa ang may pakinabangan sa sa mga puno ug mataniman which is this, dapat ba ibigay ni ni seller kapag naibenta na ito yung yuta or sa kanya na bong sa kanya na ba yon so put pa sa boat because the seller does not have to give the fruits received from the land before December 4. So, ang may kinabangan na niya sa land, na ay sa puno nga na niya taniman, mama is or what else, si seller. So, hindi required na binigay ni Tony B. So, ibig sabihin, as fruits and interest, walang retroactive effect and interest, uh, walang retroactive effect para bang sinasabi na si na ang epekto na kasi nito as of January 20 parang si buyer ang ang mas karapatan sa mga property so hindi pwede ibaligya ni seller sa lain sapat na kung ibaligya man niya sa lain ang naay mas lakas ba mas dakong karapatan is si buyer dahil on December 4 Natupad yung condition nila pero it's not to apply to interest. So, i-retain yun ni seller. Bakit? Dahil sa side naman ni buyer, it's not to oblige to pay legal interest on the price since the fruits and interest received are deemed to have been mutually compensated. So, si buyer, nasilig kasabutan sa presyo worth of 150000 from January 20 to December 4. So, wala niya gisakahan o wala niya gipadako ang interest. Wala niya gitubuan ang interest. So, dilipod si singilon ni seller ang yung interest. So, hindi naman sinisingil ni seller yung interest. Then, ang part naman po, yung sa buyer, dili isa niya kuhaon ang mga fruits or unsa na dito nga nasa land sa Utah property like mga, mga mais o unsa pa na. Dilipod niya kuhaon ang naaput sa property dito dito kay put pa sa boat parihara sila nga na obligation or quits ra sila sa ima sila so mo ni ang reciprocal, reciprocal obligation then please go next day okay in unilateral, uh, unilateral obligation there is a usually no retroact effect because they are gratuitous the debtor received nothing from the creditor. Those fruits and interest belong to the debtor unless from the nature of nature and other circumstances it shall be inferred infer that the intentions of the person constituting the same was different. So example, C C S ni promise siya ng mudunit siya sa parcel of land kung mapili siya sa kaso. So, natupad man ang ilang condition on December 4, but that will the effect, so money lang effect. Seller has to deliver the land but has the right to retain all the fruits and interest he may have received during the pendency of the condition. So, ang nai right over the fruits and interest he have received from the from the, proper, uh, from the property, kung naamanggan hindi pa nila natupad yung condition, is si seller pa rin ang nagdodonate yung land na yun. Pati naman yung fruit ng interest na dependency of the condition. So, this is pwede kuwaon po ni buyer ang kuwaan, ang fruit ng interest. Abosado na pagkaayo. Gidunit na ganin yung land kung pwede ang fruit ng fruits na naa dito sa land. So, mo ora po. Salamat. Mahara po, Dok. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. No, so, the reporters for article 1187 really understood their report no so that's the important um thing no dire sa kapag naa kay report you need to understand your report yun para maka deliver kag tarong sa imong report okay so in this case they understood no nga uh, uh obligation to give no and in obligation to do or not to do. So that is in Article 1187. So again, the effects of conditional obligations to give once the condition has been fulfilled shall retroact to the day of the constitution of the obligation. Nevertheless, when the obligation imposes reciprocal prestations upon the parties 
the fruits and interest during the pendency of the condition shall be deemed to have been mutually compensated. If the obligation is unilateral, the debtor shall appropriate the fruits and interest received unless from the nature of circumstances of the obligation it should be in, inferred that the intention of a person constituting the same was different. Okay, so reporters, may I ask you this question? Um, because it has to do with the buying and selling of a certain lot and you mentioned about, or property, and you mentioned about the fruits no, and interest of the certain lots. In the first example, which was done by the first reporter of Article 1187, uh, for example, pagbaligya niya, mauni, no? Uh, what if wala pa yung mga tanong, unya? While pagbaligya ni, or by the, by the time na na-acquire na, na ni buyer ang certain property, unya, na ay fruits and in, na ay fruits, na ano mga, na ano mga na, na harvest gikan sa yuta. Who is, who is, uh, who has the right to koan ka na tawag ana kinsa man ay right nga mukuha ang fruits um si buyer doc si buyer doc okay very good but what if pag baligya ni buyer okay si buyer okay what if pag baligya ni seller naa na to daay mga tanom Onya namunga lang when naa na sa buyer kinsa may nae right si buyer doc buyer gihapon doc si buyer gihapon okay so um even though pagbaligya ni seller ni buyer walay bunga or walay tanom ang lot or land kun namunga na si buyer has its right Pero bisan pag naay tanom pero wala pa namunga nya namunga when the buyer that when the land is already in the buyer si buyer gihapon ang naay right correct Yes doc Yes doc Sige So can I can we proceed to Labay na malang niya 188 Kung mano na lang nato ni until so tomorrow, humano na nato gid ni ha? Ugma guys, humano na nato ni. Okay ra? Pero ganahan pa mo report ang article 1188. Karon. Sige, report na lang ang 1188 para gamay na lang. Inara ko ha if you are to stop kay maklase na mo. Nakita na kung screen doc. Yes, clear. So, good morning to all. This time I am going to tackle shortly the article 1188. So, article 1188. The creditor may, before the fulfillment of the condition, bring the appropriate actions for the preservation of his right. The debtor may recover what during the same time he has paid by mistake in case of suspensive condition. So as discussed last week, if we say suspensive condition, it is the happening of the condition which give rise to the obligation. So if there is any suspensive condition, then the creditor has the right to take any action in preservation of his right. On the other hand, the debtor also has the right to reclaim or to retake his partial payments by mistake if there is also a suspensive condition happened. Right spending fulfillment of suspensive condition. Rights of creditor. He may take or bring appropriate actions for preservation of his right. As a debtor, may render nugatory the obligation upon the happening of the condition. 
Thus, he may go to court to prevent the alienation or concealment of the property of the debtor or to have his right annotated in the registry of property. Rights of debtor. He is entitled to recover what he has paid by mistake prior to the happening of the suspensive condition. This right is granted to the debtor because the creditor may or may not be able to fulfill the condition imposed and hence it is not certain that the obligation will arise. This case of solution in debate, which is based on the principle that no one shall enrich himself at the expense of another. Therefore, if the debtor did not take his responsibility of his obligation, then the creditor has the right to take an action in order to preserve his right, which is to prevent the concealment of the property of the debtor. But also, if the creditor did not take his responsibilities of his obligation, then the debtor has the right to reclaim his partial payments. So both has the both the creditor and the debtor has the rights if there is any suspensive condition happen. Note that the payment before the fulfillment of the condition must be by mistake. Otherwise, the debtor is deemed to have impliedly waived the condition. In any case, he cannot recover what he has prematurely paid once the suspensive condition is fulfilled. So example, under a contract to sell a parcel of land, full payment was not made by the property was later sold absolutely by the vendor to another. Example, under a contract to sell a parcel of land, full payment was not made by the vendee because of the non-fulfillment of the suspensive condition, which properly sold absolutely by the vendor to another. S and B entered to a contract to sell a parcel of land evidenced by a memorandum of agreement which stipulates and possession of the property the full payment and that the balance thereof was payable within six months from the day would notify that the certificate of title of the property could be to the sale of the property in favor of T. It appeared that as exerted efforts to register the property and buy the property and was only interested in dealing with other buyers to make a profit, as even pleaded with him several times to purchase the property, less expenses of registration as there were other interested buyers. Issue is B entitled to recover the property in question from T held. No, there was no actual sale on the part of B. No full payment would be made until a certificate of title of the property was ready for transfer in his name. Since B, the buyer, did not have a full payment and was only interested in dealing with other buyers to make a profit, so as the vendor sold the parcel of land to T. In this case, the buyer, B, has no right to recover the property from T since there is no full payment yet but he has the right to recover or retake his partial payments from S, the vendor. Under the second paragraph of Article 1188, even if B did not mistakenly make partial payments, in as much as the suspensive condition was not fulfilled, it is only fair and just that B be allowed to recover what he has paid as in expectancy that the condition will be fulfilled. Otherwise, there would be unjust enrichment on the part of S. In this case, the heirs of S were ordered to also pay B interest at 12% per annum on the sum received by S from the time the regional trial court rendered its original decision. Thank you. That's all. Porter for 1188, no? So 1188 is very simple. The creditor, ang kapautang, 
before the fulfillment of the condition bring the appropriate action of the preservation of his right. And the debtor, on the other hand, ang nangutang, reco may recover what during the same time he has paid by mistake in case of a suspensive condition. So, nalitan, nakabayad siya by mistake, na siya right nga, recover ulit. No, yung kuhaon balik. So, na ay, pwede mo i-recover si creditor ni debtor. So the rights pending fulfillment of a suspensive condition, number one, rights of the creditor. Number two, rights of the debtor. So maura ni siya, no, ang very important point, Article 1188. Um, the creditor has or is given his right to um, preserve no, his right. Niya si debtor po is given the right to get a reimbursement if ever um, he has paid by mistake a certain obligation. So, madala pa si Article 1189? Yes, Doc. Sige, para mahuman na lang gini. Go, Dai. Makita ra dok. Ana tiet. Kana di Japan dai. Kana dok, makita na dok. Na anamis. Sige, thank you. So good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, dok. Um, our reporting for today is all about Article One One Eight Nine, and I'm pair with Darielle Santorita. So Article 1189 all about when the conditions have been imposed with the intention of suspending the efficacy of an obligation to give, the following rules shall be observed in case of improvement, loss, or deterioration of the thing during dependency of the condition. So kung ang conditions ko no is kanang gilit siya ma, madayon or ma suspend ang obligation nga dapat mahatag na, na shy rules nga i observe so number one if the thing is lost without the fault of the debtor the obligation shall be extinguished so kung abutang mawala niya dili dili sala sa debtor so ang ang obligation diri is possible ay ang obligation kay mawala or maquits Two, if the thing is lost through the fault of the debtor, he shall be obliged to pay damages. It is understood that the thing is lost when it perishes or goes out of commerce or disappears in such way its existence is unknown or it cannot be recovered. So, kung ang butang mawala, pinaagi sa sala sa debtor, na siya oblige nga mabayran ang mga damages. Number three, when the thing deteriorates without the fault of the debtor, the impairment is to be borne by the creditor. So, kung ma-deteriorates 
ang butang or kanang wala na siya value or kanang kan mubo na kay ay kanang ang iyang value is ma lower so ang maka benefit yun kay ang creditor ang nagpautang ay i mean ang ang gapautang so if Number four, if it deteriorates through the fault of the debtor, the creditor may choose between the recession of the obligation and its fulfillment with indemnity, in, with indemnity for damages in either case. If the kung kung ang butang ko nung mawala, I mean kung ang butang mati deteriorates sa sala sa debtor, the creditor may choose between recession of obligation. Which means recession is when a contract is rendered null and void. So and pretty put some pili between fulfillment. So number five, if the thing is improved by its nature or by time, the improvement shall inure to the to the benefit of the creditor. So nasa improvement kung ang butang na improvement by its nature or kung ang yung oras. So the benefit. Well, goes to the creditor. So number six, if it is improved at the expense of the debtor, he shall have no other right than that granted to the Nawala ka na eh. Wala siguro yung signal sa reporter. Okay, so Article 1189 um, gives certain conditions, no? If something will happen, no, like, when the conditions have been imposed with the intention of suspending the efficacy of an obligation to give, the following rules shall be observed in case of the improvement, loss, or deterioration of the thing during the pendency of the condition. So there, the reporter give um, six conditions. So, and also there are requisites to apply Article 1189, number one. The obligation should be real obligation, ha? Huh? The number two, the object is specific or determinate. Kanang magunitan yun siya. The obligation is subject to a suspensive condition. The condition is fulfilled. Dapat na fulfilled na ang condition. Onya, there is loss, deterioration, or improvement of the thing during the pendency of the condition. So it means to say, guys, nga applicable na ning article 1189 kung humana niya na fulfill ang condition pero nawala na na kuan ang certain nga thing no so unsay mga asa mo apply siya so that this is all about uh, art, article 189 niya kinds of laws nga i consider ani nga article physical loss number one, no when the thing perishes as when a house is burned and reduced to ashes so nawala gid siya Number two, legal loss. When a thing goes out of commerce, when it is expropriated, or when the thing therefore legally become illegal, no, so di na pwede. Civil loss when the thing disappears in such a way that the existence the existence is unknown. No, so it's all about ang um, Article One One Eight Nine ng yod is all about. Na fulfill na ang obligation pero nawala ang butang no so unsa ba mga conditions sa mga consider ta nga nga ob, naagya po'y obligation si creditor naagya po'y obligation si obligor okay just make a review on that so sorry but nawala doc ah uh, yes nawala ka. so wala kay na internet 
Nawala ka diyan ang wifi do kay ticket man good ang among kuan dire do. Ah sige. So anyway, Charlene, I already have given a uh, synthesis of your or article 1189. So siguro tomorrow, we're just going to give question and answer na lang sa imong report day then. We'll proceed to article 1190, 1191 and 1192. So tulo ka buok ug mahuman, then akong ihatag na lang ning uban article 1193 pod. No, but before mag-start ang Article 1193, I'll be giving a quiz after the report of 1192. The quiz is online and dili siya i-post sa dili na ko siya i-post sa Google Classroom. So online siya guys for those who can attend tomorrow's classes, okay? Thank you so much reporters. So we ended Article 1189 excluding Article 1183 kay wala man siya kay klase man siya. I hope tomorrow na na ang Article 1183. Again, we will end Article 1192 tomorrow. Then quiz after that will be Article 1193. Do you understand, class? Yes, yes Doc. Okay, thank yes, you so doc. much. So just I will upload this video sa YouTube and you can just watch in there. Duha na kabuo katong last nga reporting o karon nga report akong i-upload. Then watch it in there in preparation for your quiz tomorrow. Thank you so much, guys, and have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye po. Thank you, Doc. Bye, Doc. Thank you, Doc. God bless. Thank you, Doc.